Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker with a tea here that is is actually an, an old, a, tra a traditional source of tea that um, doesn't get heard about or didn't talked about a lot that much. Um, but I'll go ahead and get this started. This, the, this area that I'm going to be talking about, um, fairly remote. There's some indication that uh, Japanese Zen monks may have visited this area at a very early time to kind of to learn about, uh, and they probably gained some knowledge about tea and Buddhism from ch this Chinese area. I'm going to get what you saw me do is put in enough tea here to cover the basic, uh, cover the bottom uh, inch to inch and a half diameter of my gaiwan here. My water has been brought to a boil. It's about a three ounce gaiwan, and it's been cooling for about a minute now. But still got plenty of heat, and I'm going to put in enough uh, water so a little bit rests just above the rim, kind of creating a seal. Let me set this water out of the way now and put this lid on and talk a little bit about this tea. This is from Camellia sinensis, uh, Canadian, which is based in Montreal and Quebec. Uh, this is their Baie Huiming, Huiming being the area that I was talking about. Uh, Huiming has a temple area there. And, and this particular tea, I should, before I get talking about the background too much, this particular tea, 25 grams currently available, 25 grams currently available for $8.75. Now, this is a 2011 harvest. Uh, 2012 should be arriving very shortly, maybe a month, two months max. So you could start looking out for, one, if you, if you like this particular tea, don't mind the age so much, you could... Uh, Go ahead and get this probably at a, uh, at, at a what I believe is a bargain price was eight seventy five. When the new harvest comes in, that price may go up. So, but you get a fresher tea. Talking about this particular tea, as I said, I, uh, there's a temple associated with this Huiming area. Uh, it seems to be fairly uh, a very ancient or very old uh, tea producing area associated with that temple. The monks there probably. Uh, were some of the ones who cultivated the tea in that area. Um, what else do I want to say? Zhejiang province. I should mention the province that it's in. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about this tea as far as the dry leaf, the wet leaf, and the liquor. I'm going to go ahead and look at it in those areas. Good. First off, starting with the dry leaf here, give it a smell, see what's going on here. First off, I get aromas that... Um, I often come across with um, like a bimodon. There is a kind of a starchy element. There's a toasted element there. Uh, not quite nutty. Um, more like I said, a lightly uh, a starchy, uh, almost uh, associate with um, straw, not hay, maybe a dry straw. Um, a little bit of uh, the, 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 the emotion, the aromas, if I were to be tasting something, it, it brings to mind a starchy kind of raw white potato. Um, looking at this leaf, and the starchiness also kind of indicates the, the, the toasting aspect, the, roast, the drying elements that were involved there. Looking at this leaf, they are very fi fairly fine looking leaves. They are bright, uh, they're a bright greenish yellow in most cases. They are um, and it looks like there are leaf sets here. I pulled up a piece here that is, looks like at least two leaves and, and, and a bud there. Um, you do kind of see some fuzzy, silvery type elements on these, indicating that these are very young tips or buds there. Um, they are wrapped or twisted along the length of the, the, the leaf there. They... Um, Leaves are, you know, maximum of an inch and a half. Most of those under that an inch or less in most cases. Um, it looks like a very, fairly vibrant, uh, bright green type of color. So that's positive notes there. Um, this tea, as I said, was kind of obscure for a while, but... Um, there was a 1915 uh, expo in Panama where this tea was presented and in competition with other teas. And that, uh, it, it won a gold medal. And with that, it kind of began to open up a little bit more that people in 
even in China today, you may not find that many people who, who uh, seek out or even recognize that name of Hui Ming teas, green teas. Um, so, but with 1915 coming along and that award, that still carries a little bit of, of cachet. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move on and talk about the, the uh, wet leaf here. So, I'm going to pour this, get my pitcher over here, pour. Light color, I'm already noticing fairly light color coming off of there. But, we'll give this tea, give these uh, wet leaves a look and a smell here. Now I'm getting what I find with, and I've, I've found this with um, with other some other Zhejiang type of teas. Uh, there's a lima bean kind of note. There's a there's a very faint, uh, subtle, uh, roasted cashew type of smell, but that's but that's underneath that kind of lima bean type note. So it is more of a beany element here. Um, as this cools a little bit, I'm getting, I'm picking up a little bit more of the sweetness there. There is a, a sweet, uh, sweet pea type of smell coming off there. Think of uh, fresh uh, sugar snap, fresh uh, peas in the pod there. There's a little bit of that sweetness starting to build up and rise as this cools off some. Pulling out a few of these leaves, that brightness is still coming out. They are a bright greenish yellow. I pull out just the leaf stuck here to the lid. Very vibrant pale yellowish green there. Uh, another one stuck uh, mostly intact. I'm going to put it back though. Uh, pull out a couple of these others because I noticed some sets and I kind of want to see like for example here's a, a leaf not uh, fully opened still folded in half. Uh, here is a set of what was uh, a, a more a leaf, two leaves and a bud. But this, the bottom leaf looks like it is kind of torn off there. I'm going to go ahead and mash that, press that down. Let me pull up, see if I can find another set, a leaf and bud set. What I'm also noticing is the, the ends of these where they've been uh, clipped or snipped or broken off of the plant. Got a bit, a bit more of a darkness there. Uh, actually moving over towards a fairly rich reddish rust type of color. So more oxidation did take place at that cutting or that, that breaking point where it's separated from the plant. Uh, pulling out one more, I want to get this set a nice uh, multi leaf because you know sometimes there's different levels of the harvesters to have different levels of consistency and producers do as well. As far as do you want one leaf? Is that the standard? Is it two leaves in a bud? Is it one leaf in a bud? Is it just the bud? Is it three leaves? This one's got one, two, uh, three leaves in a bud there. So there's a variety of uh, of uh, stand. Uh, shapes or I could say plucking options there. So setting that to the side, I'm going to go ahead and get to the liquor here. Give that swirl for just a second. Hold it up to the light. Uh, uh, again, a pale, um, not a, but not, uh, not thin or not weak looking, just lighter in color, uh, fairly bright yellow. It's, it's, it's moving a little bit towards a, a little bit more of a duller uh, you know, slightly, slightly uh, less greenish yellow, so less brightish tinge to it. Looking down in the cup, though, it still has a good brightness to it, not murky or cloudy. Up, picking up them, that starchiness that I, that I mentioned that I could smell in the beginning there. A starchiness that uh, uh, evokes a kind of uh, bimodonal white peony type of starchiness there that I, I think of with that. Uh, again, that's close-ish to a kind of a, a cut white raw potato. Along with that, it starts as it cools a little bit, as I taste a little bit more, it, it tones off and gets more towards a, a roasted, 
a plain roasted, you know, unsalted, unhoney glazed type of peanut. There's a bit of a toasty, a light toasty nut there, okay? Um, and the back, it builds more towards a sweetness though. I'm in the back, I'm getting more of that kind of sweet pea, um, or there's a, I should say, bean, let's see, bean, uh, bean leaf. There's a Chinese vegetable called domiao, and that's really coming out right now. I'm getting sauteed domiao coming out. There's a bit of that beany, uh, beany, the leaves of the bean plant there, the, the stir fry there. That's that's present in this. That's not. It's it's pleasant and. Um, it gets a bit of this fragrant sweetness of the plant. It gets a little bit of that starchiness. There's not a harsh, harsh astringent uh, element to this. It's fairly smooth. It's again a little starchy at the beginning, but then it drops off and it gets. It, I'm get, still getting a residual uh, sweetness there. Again, that's a vegetal pea type of bean pea type of sweetness there. So, looking at this tea, um, I'm gonna have. To, I would give this tea a, a fairly high score. It's 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 got it's fairly well balanced. It's not overly astringent. It's not harsh. It's got some starchiness, but yet that starchiness uh, uh, plays well. It, it balances well with the, the sweetness there at the end. It gets a a, a a pleasant and welcome type of vegetal component with that sweet pea, that stir fry, that domio that I was talking about. So, putting all that together, I'd probably give this tea a 91, worth considering, worth checking out. And again, this is a 2011, perhaps the 2012 season is even better. Perhaps the 2012 will give more fresher characteristics, richer characteristics to it, that you, that you want to check out in that. So, come back to Walker Tea Review to look at teas that uh, you want to put on your wish list.